Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. So a huge thank you to them for making this possible and also to Netball Australia for having the guts to put on a tournament like this and help out other nations that are struggling to keep up with everything during the pandemic. And we do know that Netball Australia CEO Kelly Ryan is here today and will play a part in the ceremony at the end of the match. So that's wonderful to see such support from such high-ranked people around Netball in Australia. Yes, I'm just looking around us, Britt. The, the stand is almost at capacity. We're starting to get almost every seat taken now. It's great. He have got uako ko ni pe bo Digital International. Ave ai topa panga wa noa prepaid bundle pe ko talafselini ki ho family pe a hu ho hingo ki lulu ki kuna ai Samsung Galaxy Flip Z pe S21 pe ko pade pa anga wa ngiao he wiki ko to ape. Ki ha ofanga mari ke ikuna pe ke ngawe aki a Digital International app pe ko digitalinternational.com pe a hi ai fale ko loa. Fitu taki ma upem ho kainga aki ho ave ai topa prepaid bundle pe talafselini pe a honi. I mean, they're trying to stay cool, calm and collected, but you can tell there's some nerves bubbling away under the surface there. And for many of these players, it is their debut series, their debut opportunity to represent their country. So this is a pretty big deal. Yeah, it definitely is. There's been some um, debuts all the way through this tournament. I'm really looking forward to watching that first goal drop. Hopefully it's Team Fiji's one that goes down. It is their first centre pass, so it'd be nice to get the first run on the board off your own centre. But I am looking forward to both teams getting their first score and just listening to this stadium erupt. So just two minutes until we have the first centre pass. We should give our umpires a big shout out as well. Kate Wright and James Matthews will be running alongside the court today and reserve is Gemma Cook. So yesterday we unfortunately saw an umpire go down. That reserve is really important, we found out. The good news is that umpire is in the stands today, so he's back here supporting him. That's great. Be involved. Seeing Team Fiji just standing and coming together onto the court. Tonga's already out there. And here goes the crowd. Wow. For those of you that are sitting at home, I think Britt and I are going to be having our work cut out for us today, yeah. being able to commentate <laughs> this match. I hope you can hear us. So Fiji with the first centre pass, heading to the right of your screen in the black and white dress. And Tonga, of course, in the red and white, heading to the left once they get that ball in their hands. Caitlin Fisher off the centre pass. And we haven't seen a lot of Caitlin Fisher throughout this series. She's actually been dealing with a bit of an injury, so we hope she's able to play the full match today. And have an impact for Fiji in that centre bib. You can see Vothia having an impact early. Uh, Lucia 
Valakula. A little bit closer now with the penalty. Opening the account for Fiji. There goes the first cheer. And there goes the crowd. First goal. Working it around Tonga. Beautiful little tip from Alisi Ningri, the captain. Michael Palau's just having to settle instructions from, just some clarity there from James Matthews, the umpire. Palavi, we've talked her up in the pregame. Solid on her first there shot. She goes. The equaliser, one all. Just to settle the nerves, both shooters shots down. Using the transverse line to reset with that pressure from Hansen. Ensuring nothing is easy for Fiji to start. Lafia eyes up the net. And again, a penalty just under the post. Makes it a little bit easier for Fiji. Eases the pressure. She misses the shot. And gets it with a second bite of the cherry. So Tonga need to really clean that up, don't they? Yes, they do. Well, is smart, though, to make sure that she's making sure that defender's standing the side and away, not rushing that shot at all. As does Pallavi on that land. Yeah. I tell you, Ningiri thought that rebound might have been hers then. It's fascinating. Look at her profile. She actually played here in Sydney in 2015 during the World Cup. Yes. So she's been around the Fiji team a long time. Yes, yeah, she's one of their most seasoned players. Strong leader. And we'll see the caller just swinging it open. Beautiful sweep up front. And the goal attack. A little turn. Oh, there's a high five celebration. Fiji are hot. They're feeling it. There's a breaking call off this centre pass for Tonga to capitalise on. Veve, unsure which option to go to. Into the pocket she finds Okafalau. Hanson tries to go back. It's tight in there. Fiji up in the ante. Palavi oh, puts Palavi. the shot up, falling out of court. No worries at all. Three apiece. That was quite incredible. Both feeders were very wide. There wasn't an option for Palavi to go to the top of the circle. She had to back herself falling off court and go to that shot. And for her to bank that, that was just awesome. Sophia. Another comfortable goal. Oh, fantastic work from the captain. Lingiri just pinched that one out the front there. Strong enough in front position with the long arms to pull that one in because Veve saw that pass. Fiji in space, just struggling to penetrate the shooting circle. And a little penalty again, given away by Talanoa, just eases things up for them. Just a touch more speed maybe from P Fiji to hit that circle quicker. And there it is. Yeah. Offensive contact. The umpire is keeping a close eye on all the contact on court very early on. Veve finds Hanson. Quick work to Palavi. The one-handed grab sailing through the air. Oh, she's missed. Missed. Finishes off with the second go. And she was challenged by Nualovu. You're going to have to be careful with those rebounds at that end, clearly, because Fiji are looking for them. Fisher round the body of Veve. Shooter to shooter. Falau running away with it. And straight to Palave. Stepping in. Hand up just a touch too long there from the captain and Geary. She just needs to drop that to the side so she doesn't get that call. No one's home. Oh. Talanoa just leaving the Thea under the post. Dangerous with Petty Talanoa wanting to come out and hunt early when she's starting to get that confidence. 
I mean, we're not even 10 minutes in and she's already starting to hunt. So Fiji just need to be very careful on that ball security. But she did come out of touch early and it's left Wadia home and home alone for that quick goal. That was the question I had for you, Margie. So with a shooter, you get that settler goal in, you get your first goal, maybe a couple of goals and you're settled and ready to play. How does a defender get that feeling? Because it's a very different position. I think it's about just estimating the, you know, the tracking. If you can start to identify patterns of play, what do you already know about the player, the homework that you've done? Um, hopefully that is exactly what all of these defenders here have already looked at in their homework books before they've turned up for this grand final. Oh. Elevation there from Paul Nuku. That was excellent to get up for that. Fisher with the throw in, very direct, swinging, down low. Both defenders had a go for that one. Mm. Tortaya Lupu is definitely looking for some ball, hunting. Again on the land with both defenders at both ends, the goal defence is just landing with their arms still up, so adjustments for them. Hanson stuck for an option, has to come back. And cross court now. The defender's helping out with the attacking line. Oh, great oh, all around. Was really good effort. From Palavi, but oh, Lubu almost had it. Yeah, and that was set up at the front there. We had a tether. Nasanivalu come out and across that wing attack ball, which then opened up for that little passage of play. And Emma Mulovu at the back coming forward for that attempted intercept. She was close to getting it too. Here comes Wadia. Just going goal for goal. Been really impressed with the work that Nasa Nivalu has been doing so far on Okafalao. Because Okafalao was getting a lot of ball early on and now her option has become a little bit cloudy. A little bit of hesitation about giving her the ball. Uh, foot was out. Malovo, she's just checking herself on that and having a bit of self-talk. She just needs to collect herself and reset. Good play. Just talking about Akafala and her speed before. Nisena Valo did a really good job with her footwork. She's very agile and quick. She is quite um, new and experienced to Team Fiji, but she certainly has a lot of skills to pull on. Fisher moving it to Rusu Bukula. No one get. Rusu Bukula now looking for the shot and gets a penalty. All right, we've just found out the scoreboard on the Netball Australia TV stream is currently not working, so we'll make sure we'll keep you updated each time a goal is scored. It's currently 9-8 Fiji's way. Opa Fulau doing well with the cut and drive backwards. And the ball into Palavi. Yeah, and Will Lovell just had her hands wrapped around. Umpire James Matthews has seen that one. Certainly can't do that, so just need a bit of, bit of discipline under the post there by the defender. No one get drive really hard for that. Sees a long ball. Oh, Tolanoa had a crack. Wasn't able to come away with it. And Vodia just responds with a goal. A beautiful ball from Naangi. Just to see that option opening up. And as you said, Rusia Vakula keeping it in play. Tapping it back into Vathia. Some nice. brilliant flair that we've seen throughout this Pacific Australia Sports Netball Series. I was about to say there's some patient feeding around the top of the circle, but just a touch too long there from Luan Akapalau. She won't be happy with that one, so she'll be working hard to readjust, and if not, win ball where there it is. So the crowd is playing its part as the eighth player for each of these teams. <laughs> and there's that little adjustment from Luana. Well, Tonga lucky to get the ball back in that scenario. Just with the mistake from Fiji. So we're staying at 10 apiece. Going goal for goal. Can Tonga break the deadlock here?
good decision making there from Nalungu, just making sure that she wasn't going to be caught off the ball, going back to the reset option on the transverse line. Sophia makes it 11 for Fiji. They're in front by one. Very, very quick work to Oka Falau on the edge of the oh. circle. Falavi, that's where she likes it. Blocks it out of the air, finds the net. We're back 11 apiece. It's eight goals apiece scored by both shooters. Five in a row for both of them as well. Nice leg switch there from Fiji, but it's come off with the caller's leg. She's saying, I'm sorry. They're setting up a zone. Talanoa playing her hands and bringing this ball out from Tonga's back line. Fiji so needs to move a little bit more aggressively just to hold them wide as wide as they can. Take their feet hard into that longer pass as soon as it's released. There's a mistake. And it's caught on a replay by umpire Kate Wright. Yes, Foranuku just getting stuck with the replay there. Throwing from the middle third. Looking in, the roll off the body for Thea. Nothing but net. Fiji, 12, lead Tonga 11. We've got three and a half to play in this first quarter of the grand final of the Pacific Australia Sports Netball Series. Upper for Lau, looking into the pocket where she finds the captain, Veve. And Palavi, right in front, mid-range. She was her waiting for that one, wasn't she, Britt? She was there and she's set herself up nicely and just wanted to see the feeders make some eye contact to release that ball. But there's come out high. Nongul, nice little feed into Rusa Kula, and then off the ground again to Wadia, waiting for the umpire call. Right, she says that it's a Fijian throw-in. Bouncing in. Athea recollects it. Miss shot. How does she get that back? The strength in the wrist work. Oh. Incredible. Fiji out, 13. Over Tonga, 12. Now, just having a look at that Fiji pa shooter pass to pass, I would really like to see Rusiva Kula take the shot more of the time because they're losing it when they're trying to oh. shoot at a shooter. They are, certainly. And I think that's just a little bit of confidence. Rusiva Kula was injured. Uh, two days ago, so she's just, it's really nice to actually see her on the court and communicating. She hasn't been talking much in the last last 24 hours due to that knock to that jaw, so it's really, you know, ple pleasing to see her, just a contact call there, being called on Tuitai Lepu. Has she had the pen and paper out communicating that way? <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of nodding, I think. <laughs> but that day of rest has certainly done some good for her. And she gets the shot. So she's answered you, Britt. She might be listening. 14-13, <laughs> Fiji lead Tonga. Hansen. Close to a hell ball. And the ball's been turned over from Rusi Vakula. Straight to Fiji. Oh, Tonga. On a, a tap and pull. Unfortunately, umpires called it a contact. But what a really good first ball effort again from Tuitai Lepu. Yes, the umpire call settles all the chaos. Oh, they're there for the turnover. They're the ones we were looking to see, and she's brought one out in the first quarter. That was right into her bread basket. Beautiful positioning from Verve and the timing. Just sees oh. her possession now. Here she is with ball in hand through traffic. And captain she'll get a penalty. F Sorry, Britt, the captain from Fiji. Alyssa Mangiri just got a little hand to that one, but it did open up the defensive um, circle. The shooters were both inside and only one out. Here is the captain again with the ball. Mangiri's asking for the players to come forward. Teda Nasarivalu rushing the pass. It's Veve, the Tongan captain again that gets the ball. Steadies Any ball the ship. that's going to hang up there, Britt, it's going to be Veve coming down with it. <laughs> Steadies the ship for Tonga as Palavi ensures they stay level. 31 seconds on the clock. It's 14 all. Fiji need to score here. Pe Petty Talanoa got a tap to that, but so did Vodhia. Umpires definitely called that a Tongan way. And here comes Tonga. Can they score? 16 seconds. 
They'll need to move the ball around just slightly before they need to force it down to that shooting third. Here they go. Going long, Hanson now with the ball in hand, finds Okafalau looking in, unsure, still gives it to Palavi. There's a wrestle. She pulls it and she has two seconds. Oh, scored on the Nails buzzer. the shot. Chunga take the lead for the first time. They're out by one goal, 15 to 14 at the first break. I think the crowd's happy. <laughs> There are some overwhelming support here for Tonga. And you can hear that reflected any time they get the upper hand over Fiji. Now the music's back on at quarter time. And it's just beautiful to see both teams, or the supporters of both teams, really enjoying the atmosphere. Mm. They're obviously cheering loud for their team. A lot of the Tongan family have been here all week, which is absolutely fantastic to see, and especially for the athletes that are away from home, to have extended family here, being with them on the court side, it just means so very much. All right, now what are you seeing in terms of oh, strength? Oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's two of them today. So this man in the middle of the screen has been entertaining us all week. Loves a song, loves a dance. There's been a couple of dance-offs across the court from one side to the other in the stands. And he's very happy to be broadcasted internationally, I'm sure, on Netball Australia TV. Now, talking about Tonga, they're obviously in front by one. Just a little bit of momentum forced by Veve on transition has seen them take the lead into this break. What are the strengths you're seeing from them at the moment in that first quarter? I think it's the I think what we're looking at is just um, it's that mental game that they're playing. It's about staying in possession of the ball, and once they lose it, that real scramble to make sure that they're setting up a hard pressure push on the next pass. They're staying very much in Fijian's presence and not letting any ball get away. And Veve is just working her feet so hard under the floor to make sure that she's getting it up and under each every one of those balls, and she's not afraid to go hunting. And that's something that Fiji need to be very well aware of when they're passing and what type of pass they actually want to execute because the longer the ball hangs in that air, as I said before, Vev is the one that's going to come down with it. And so do you think that's what's being said at the moment? I can see the coach having a chat with Caitlin Fisher in particular in that midcourt and then now chatting with the shooters as well. So just sort of relaying some messages to them about what they want them to do when attack. Yeah, I think there's definitely a conversation just with that front end about making sure they keep those connections, the lines of sight, that there's a lot of opportunity and offers to the ball, not just one, so that there's a variety that can be selected from. Keeping someone in that backup space on that transverse line is so vital. We can't be forcing that ball into the shooting third without having some support on that line. So, Meanwhile, in Tonga's camp, we can see Okafalau with a little smile. So, Jaqua talking directly with her. What do you think the message might be to the midcourt and also Hanson sitting right next to Just a little bit on Violetti. Grew up in New Zealand and plays in Wellington for the PIC Netball Club. She was actually admitted to the bar in 2019 and is studying her Masters in Law this year. So a very smart cookie. Works as an investigator for the New Zealand Chief. And we're glad to have her back on court because she provided oh. some highlights for us yesterday for Tonga. She certainly did. And Palavi just nailed an absolute long bomb. If we had a super shot, that was it. <laughs> Okafalau reaches up, steals the ball from Fiji. 
and Pallavi on that baseline again. Goes back to back. Tonga scored twice to start Two the second goals. quarter. Yeah, Fiji need to lift on this one. They have to shift up a gear, switch back on. And I believe our scoreboard is now fixed, so you can rely on the score at the bottom of the screen. It is 17-14. Tonga leading Fiji. Luana Akapulau's foot just going out there. So Fijian goalkeeper Emma Mulovo gets a throw in. Mungiri just lost a footing just to look like there. Nasanivalu to Fisher. A great contest. Captain's just asking the Fijian attackers in the transition to make sure that the defenders are bringing that ball down. Mm -hmm. That should help out a little bit because at the moment that... There we go. Veve always hunting ball. Heading up this inside channel is Tonga. Looking straight into Balavi. They go one more pass. She rolls off the body. And the umpire will give it back to Hansen just inside. So a contact call. Both shooters squished together. Now Palavi has a little room with the penalty in front. And just a little arm up there from Emma Mulovo. And the umpire has seen it. So she's just got to keep those hands down. While she's moving the shooter, trying three to hedge her. In, three in a row for Tonga. Fiji desperately need an answer. Caitlin Fisher bubbles the ball and it's straight into the hands of Tonga. Totaya Lupu wasn't going to miss that opportunity. Hansen missed an opportunity to go to Palavi. Instead goes back to Okafalau and sets herself up right-hand side of the post. So that's a pass placement issue that happened to the Fiji in front end there with the attacker. You see Caitlin Fisher dropping that ball, but it was just the delivery was really quite low. It came into her hip and she wasn't expecting it that low. She needs it out in front. Tonga answering it with a quick goal. Do you think the nerves are starting to get to Fiji? I just think just that concentration level Tonga got out to those two quick go uh, two quick goals that we saw there at the start of the quarter. It's just upset the apple cart a little bit. Fiji do need to focus and really execute everything correctly. Maintain possession all the way through. Confusion here is that they thought they'd scored a goal, Tonga, but Okafula just had a little word with the umpire, just clarifying what she'd blown her whistle for. So Tonga hit 20, they lead Fiji by six. Five goals to nothing so far. And there's Veve on contesting first ball. She's very strong at it. She certainly had a good week of practice. Tonga have done really well on this transverse line, heading into Fiji's goal third. Just to turn over ball a number of times here, and Palave, the player, can't quite convert, and it's the captain for Fiji, Mungiri, just cleaning it up underneath. Nice strong rebound there that we saw from the captain. Just holding time for the ball that needs to be given back to, to Tonga. So, one of the matchups I'm really loving at the moment is with the wing defence from Tonga, Fayonuku, and also the wing attack from Fiji, Narangi, because they're almost cancelling oh. each other out. They're having to work that extra bit harder to even get some space on court. Absolutely, she hasn't. Anna Naungu just did so well just to stay in there and tap that ball into Rusi Vakula. Times called by Fiji. Injury time, so we've got a change here. Nasanivalu's come off. Navui has come on. Oh. Just a bit of a bottom leg collision there. Palavi and Mulovu both hitting the floor. Hansen with the goal. Going long in the air. Coming through so quick. Some creative oh. passing from Fiji, but it's not come off. Too loopy. Just trying to force something that wasn't there. And Tonga now give it back to Fiji. Caitlin Fisher picks it up. Just an overload set up quickly there from Fiji, which had them all, all the Tongan attackers on the line there. So... That was that loop ball that went over the top. They were able to pull back in and Wadia capitalises. 
Fiji will be happy they were able to get that back and convert that transition. Just their second goal for the quarter so far. Now Pallavi doing well to find some space, but she'll just have to be careful the umpire doesn't see her giving the goalkeeper a shove for Fiji because that is happening. <laughs> a hug for <laughs> Bevy and Hanson. Nice little moment for Tonga on court. Fisher looks like she seems to have taken a knock as well. She's limping backwards to the centre circle. And you know she wasn't already 100% leading into this game. You can just see her wincing a little bit too. It doesn't look like she has full range oh, of that movement. Captain Elysium has just turned the ball over and Veve has just turned it back. Veve, such a brilliant captain in that she leads by example. She's always hunting. And Palave. Again, just a little push on the goalkeeper to get free. Fafia. Bullies her way to the post. Fiji are coming back here. Behind by five currently, and turnover would definitely help them. Crowd has just turned up the volume with Go Fiji Go. And here comes Tonga in response. Navui lost a shoe. Yep. Wing defense's shoe has come off before in the tournament twice prior Brit. So mm -hmm. Navui needs to get those laces really strapped up tight. Mengiri to receive a call up. BJ just flirting with their footwork and then trying to rush things and it ends up back in the hands of Tonga. Just that pass placement again we were talking about with that front end with Team Fiji. They just need to settle it down. Violetti not happy with herself. The goalkeeper just throwing it laterally and straight off court. So Fiji gifted an opportunity to finish what they started. Ophia standing up. It's a big moment. The shot doesn't go through, but Violetti will stand aside as Fiji take the penalty shot. Okay, left will call for an obstruction. The goal defence, so it's an advantage goal. Four goals behind Fiji. Can they make it three? Caitlin um, Fisher not exactly ready for that pass. And there wasn't enough on it to quite get there. So the goal attack, Lucy Rukula really needs to push that pass a lot harder and into an attacker that's coming into space, but doesn't deter the goal from happening from the goal shooter, Matilda Vodia. Behind by three, Fiji. There's a breaking call. Yes, it's a breaking call on Fiji for that centre pass. So now Tonga just given a little bit extra room as they head towards their post. Hanson. Hanson. <laughs> Bullied a bit by the Fiji yep. captain. Oh, Emma Moilovo comes up but then just throws that ball away. It's that adrenaline after a rebound that you just need to take a little breath. Make sure that you can see your partner in the tag and then let it go. I think it's easy to get lost in the moment here, especially as the crowd gets up and cheers you and you just think I've got to get rid of it instead of really assessing the options that you've got Absolutely Emma will be internally berating herself for that pass Every goal is going to count in this last six minutes of play BG playing it patient The Fia comes out as a bit of a lifeline she finds Fisher on the edge and shooter to shooter Fiji starting to find some momentum. They were a little bit late to the party today. Of course, going goal for goal in that opening quarter. Very nice to see the Fijian attackers just moving that ball around calmly. Emma Moilovu. Oh, she did get the ball away this time after the turnover patiently. Although Fisher again wasn't expecting that pass just straight into her. I think it's hard too because Fisher hasn't been present for some of the games this week. That's so right. you'd be slow on the uptake mm. with what they're expecting on court. Fafia down low. A great challenge from Violetti. But Fiji carry on. Both goal defences start positions there on that three feet were quite low and tight. The umpire was pretty sure he was going to blow that whistle and he did. So Fiji. maybe Fiji can capitalise on that. With an opportunity here to just get one behind. Stepping up. Lucia Vapula. 
takes Fiji to 23. Moringa really found Rusty Cooler nicely on that back passage of play there. Ball placement. Moana wing attack. Akapala just moving that ball up for a set. Tonga a bit flat-footed, unsure what's going to happen next in this passage of play. And Palavi says, give me the ball, I'm going to bring some order to this attacking line. Puts the ball up, takes Tonga back out by two, 25-23. Little tip, deflected out of court by Veve, she's dangerous. She's everywhere, isn't she? The thorn in Fiji's side so far today. So just being tighter on those angles, protecting the ball through those passages as the feeders move it through just to keep Veve on the outside. So trying to push her wide as much as possible. Well, they, they need to stay on the inside or at least be able to draw her away from the ball placement. It doesn't help that it looks like Fisher isn't 100%. She's up against one of Tonga's best players. They almost need to send a flare up to distract her at this point, Brett. She's that focused. Palavi on a penalty. Gets it. I'm sure Bevo's two young sons will be watching on very proud of their mother. Oka Falau, no good with the pass. Oh, sorry, Tonga ball from the Opposite side of the court. Michael Fulau now with ball in hand. Bevy driving to the top of the circle. Hanson wasn't picking up what she was putting down and the ball spills over the back yeah, line. Goal, goal defence for Fiji. Little touch from Fiji. Sees the ball back with well, Alyssa Nangiri got a little hand into that one. So I think Kate Wright certainly saw that. <laughs> Even though they were appealing it. <laughs> Palavi. Sticks her hands up. Just at the right moment to pluck the ball out of the air. And all of a sudden, Tonga with an opportunity to go four out. Here's Palavi on that baseline. She takes them out by four. And Fiji were within two and had all the momentum. So what's happening for them here? I think there's just been a couple of misfires in this attack end. We've had a ball on a hard turnover that was hotly contested by Emma Malovli and she wasn't able to get that pass out. So, I mean, that's three just there. So, And then there was the centre pass throw away. Again, it's around that concentration, having the patience, making sure that they're supporting each other. Strong hands to ball. And here's an opportunity for Fiji. Sorry Let's see from. how they go with their transition grip, bringing it through. Going from the baseline, defence has space. Here we go. This is a better showing from Fiji. And the circle edge. But oh, Via. Yeah. Nice work by the Fiji and feeders. Credit to the defenders to bring that ball through. We're there for that shot. That was a team effort. Well, Vafia did a good job because Narangi actually gave it to her when she had two defenders on her. <laughs> Whereas Rusia oh. was on her own. Topai Aleppo just come flying through for that one. She didn't hesitate. She's all links. Some beautiful aerial skills on show for both of these teams. Quick passage of play by the feeders. Good hands. Less than a minute 30 till half time. Tonga currently in front by three. 29 26. What can they do with it here? On the edge Lovely. of the circle. The wing Hansen. defense for Fiji there. Brett just needs to work harder to go with Rakafalo on those releases. And she needs to really drop back with her footwork as hard as she can into that pocket on the wing. And she's going to shut down that feed to the shooters for Tonga. Wing defence, wing attack for Fiji, just sharing it here. Out came the goal defence for Tonga. Fiji with an opportunity. Honga now gets a second opportunity on that pass off, and she does. Rusty McCall called for stepping. Goal attack for Fiji. It's a bit of a coach killer. Fiji behind by four. Vavia had a crack, and he's called on a contact. 
30 BG's seconds. BG's just setting up a quick zone. 30 seconds left to play. Can Tonga take themselves back out by another goal? Goal defensive Fiji. Melissa Mangiri getting a hand to that. The ball went flying out. There's a lot of pace on these passes. Throw in from Okafalau. Hansen finds Palavi, and that was far too easy on the feed. Oh, Palavi's missed the shot, though. Fiji and captain stands up in a big moment. They're not going to be able to score here because it's just seconds left on the clock, but she prevents Tonga from scoring again, and it's a crucial, crucial moment as they head into halftime to make sure that they're still asserting their dominance on the game. Tonga 30, Fiji 26. What are your thoughts at half-time, Margie? <laughs> 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 I forgot to work with Koe Nipe, but Digicel International. Ave ai topa panga e wanoa, prepaid bundle pe wai talafiselini ki ho family pe a e huho hi ngoa ki lulu ki kuna ai Samsung Galaxy Flip Z pe S21 pe koi pade pa anga e wang yao heu wiki kotoa pe. Ki hao whanga maari ke ikuna pe ke ngawe aki e Digicel International app pe koi digicelinternational.com pe ahi ai whanakuloa. Fitu taki ma upem ho kainga aki ho ave ai topa prepaid bundle pe talafiselini and it gave me a heart attack When you said you're doing well It's in the base of all I had And that's just been like hell Guess I'm only thinking that I can play more fast But I never thought you'd feel like it And I'm like so fast
Ana dijo el cuco, dele a que dele hijo, dije a la pico pico, mo oh, mami 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 yo, saca Ana dijo el hijo, dele a que dele hijo, dije a la pico pico, mo oh, mami 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 yo, saca Ana faca. He forgot to walk or go in here with Digicel International. Ave a top up bang a one noa, prepaid bundle because the Laf Selini Kiho family pair a huho hingoa ki lulu ki kuna a Samsung Galaxy Flip Z pe S21 because party for Anga Wang Yao he wicked cotope. Ki ha fang a mari ki ikuna pe ki ngawe aki a Digicel International app because digicelinternational.com pe a hi ai for the koloa. Fitu taki ma opem ho kainga aki ho ave a top up prepaid bundle pe the Laf Selini pe a honi. a little surprise up Tonga's sleeve. But yeah, I feel like it is because if she came out with that tag on, could you imagine what the crowd would have done? So I think watching this moment now and a very special moment for Claire in particular to represent her country. Here, here she goes. Go. She's taking that shirt off. The crowd haven't identified it just yet, but yes, they have now. <laughs> here they go. A little surprise for Fiji who have got some changes of their own. 
Although they might be playing a bit coy as well because they've got a few players with They are on. in the title's title. I have seen all tournament. They haven't taken the court yet. Once those umpires go across, they will only have 10 seconds. Here they come. Very calmly. And no, no changes to no their size. Fooling us a little bit. Some of the players on the bench have got bibs on, ready to come on in the midcourt. And here we are with Veve, ball this in hand. Is exciting. First centre pass of the third quarter. They're out by four, Tonga. You're right. This is so exciting, Margie. Currently leading 30 to 26. The red side heading towards the left-hand side of your screen. Red and white, those dresses for Tonga. And black and white for Fiji, if you're just tuning in. Navui. Navui just tried to get an arm to that one and roll it across. Umpire James Matthews said no, so penalty's taken there. Right in front, Hanson. With the jumping set up for the shot. KG stuck for that second phase as they try to push into the goal third. Mungiri just having a second look at who she was offloading to. Goal defence of Fiji. Oh, beautiful oh. work by Brucia Vakula. The ball's been brought back to the top of the circle. Caitlin Fisher. Wing attack calling for it in the pocket. Here they go. They complete the triangle. The goal attack. Offloading now to Vafia. And Fiji. Pick 27. A good response. Making sure of it, trying to go with them. <laughs> Another goal for Tonga just to settle those nerves. Coming out from halftime, sometimes it's a whole new game, isn't it? I mean, you take that big break, both teams get a chance to reset, so you really have to treat the third quarter almost like your first quarter all over again. Absolutely. And here's Claire's first defensive pressure. A goal from Bodhia. The crowd are just delighted to see Claire in that red dress with Tonga. Caitlin Fisher, centre for Fiji, offloaded it back to Navui. Back with the ball now, passing it to Namungu. Oh, we're there at the top of the circle, the shooter. Missing Vakula, goal attack, asking for ball. Oh, the ball, it looks confident, but just popped back out. A little bit too much on it. They get the feed. Goal defence. Kotai Lepu just called on a penalty pass or shot. We see the puller fed it off. Get herself closer to the post and succeeds in getting the goal. Veve giving off Tonga's centre pass here. Looking to work backwards. Up a full out. Almost covered on that lead. There's a great contest for those mid quarters. And Palavi, mid range, lines it up, fires it inside. Takes Tonga to 34. Fiji currently 29. Oh, a little push in the back. Nolunga did really well to land that contact. A lot of talk being done in the stands. The Thea has her hand up. Oh, has to recollect the it here. There's a just foot got race. Dribbled away. And the penalty, she'll just give it to her, saying, I've done enough. You can take it. How would they manage to pull that ball in? She had three red dresses on top of her. Going long into that pocket. Oh, Veve might have been offside then. Yeah, cool. Missed by the umpire. Line was close, wasn't she? Pulls right on it. 
Halavi makes sure she got the shot. Fisher working back off the center pass, going long. There's a roll on Vodnia. Oh, she wasn't able to pull that one in. The pressure from Cleo Longy, her footwork and pace under that ball just made Vodnia have to move early. And we've topped Aungi up a, a fair bit, but just to give you some background, she is obviously doing tremendous work in the Australian pathways and the New South Wales pathways, and her goal is to play for the Diamonds, and she has listed here hopefully one day for Tonga. Today is that day. It is, absolutely. It's a tick. And so we were talking about this yesterday, weren't we, Margie, that these players, if they're in Australia or New Zealand and are through those pathways, they can actually potentially, I know you're nervous as you're watching this on, Palavi, big air ball over the back line. They can potentially play for two countries if there's enough time in between. Yeah, that's true. So there is a bit of a, a period of rest between the two. So um, so they do get an opportunity to play if they wish between two. Uh, it hasn't happened a lot, but it has happened. Um, certainly Claire must be very happy and relishing every moment right now that she's doing this in New South Wales, in Australia playing for her heritage so proudly and having her family here in the crowd watching her. It's just a very special moment for her to be able to do this and achieve it. And I think that's such an amazing thing too that, you know, a lot of these players will have parents from different nations and they're able to represent both of them if they choose to and are able to through, of course, the respective pathways. But, yeah, being able to represent all aspects of your culture is amazing. Correct. That was just an easy passage of play there we just saw from the Tongans. Navui just overloaded that first ball off the centre pass with Luana Akafalao and it just allowed the Tongans to get right down through that middle channel straight into Palavi for the goal. Can Fiji respond to this off their centre pass? Yes. Almost mirrored it right back. One extra pass off was super cool a goal attack to Vudia under the post. There's a change for Fiji. The captain has got a little limp in her step, so Ningiri's going to head off. Goal yeah. defence that's come on now is Siriana Marangi. And they turned over the ball straight away. <laughs> Welcome to the court. I'll have that. Thank you very much. Oh, that ball just being sprayed a bit from Siriana Marangi, and that's those moments where the nerves are coming on. Yes, she's touched and turned a ball over, but just that pass placement on the transition didn't come away. And so she's directing her fellow wing defence to try and help her set up more of a zone yeah. with their defence. Midcourt zone's broken now, so they need to man back up quickly, shut space down. Weren't able to do it. Luana Akapalau found Hansen really quite easily there on that circle edge. And that's the danger when that doesn't work and everyone's that's on right. board with the one plan because Akapalau was free and able to roam then. There's a bib that's come off. Whose is it? Naangi. It's not often the front one that comes off. It's usually the back. I think <laughs> she's clipped it with the ball. Tough contest from Ayongi. Pulled up this time by the umpire. Now, Rusia Vakula. Nails the shot. Fiji oh. within four. Nice to see some confidence there from young... Maliana. Oh! Navui turning over her first ball of the tournament. Three feet on Luana Akafalal. They need to retain this possession. Smart work from the feeders. Just waiting for that full three seconds to decide... And Which is the best pressure. shooter to give. Unfortunately, they can't convert the goal. And you can see the frustration from Fiji. Zone up again from Team Fiji. Oh. Oh. Ball into the face. Tal Tailipu just having a look at the umpire for the call, but the whistle already went. There's Navui again having another go. Very, very hard on the circle edge. And the outside hand from Maluvu just taps it out of court. Veve looking in. Hansen stuck for an option. Three seconds ticking and you can see the panic, but it does end up with Palavi. She waits for both defenders to drop down. So she has a clear vision of the net. 
edging towards 40. Tonga, they lead Fiji 39 to 34. Midway through this quarter. Nice baseline drive there from Matilla Vavia. Oh, miraculously, <laughs> Fiji comes back with the ball. Right place, right time for Rusia Vakula. You've got to be in it to win it, though. Absolutely. Not all of that is luck. Still right under the post and ready for a ball if it popped into her lap, which it did. Veve now with the ball for Tonga. Palavi turning. Missed shot. Fiji can't contain the rebound. Still, they're putting pressure on these Tongan shooters. Hansen to Okafalau. The one, two gets her where she needs to be for the shot. And Tonga hit 40. Fiji need to respond now, Britt, if they're going to turn ball over from Tonga. They can't allow the run on the next set to happen. We're into the final five minutes of the third quarter. This game is just flying past. Umpire. Kate Wright just stopping play there and advancing the penalty. So that's a warning that's been given. Nice calm shot there from Rusi Rukula. Even with the arm of Claire Yongi right over the top of her. Fiji need there turnover footwork. here. No, let it go. Step and go unmissed. Yeah. Easier for us on this side of the court. That's right. We can I see it have a right away. <laughs> Top of the circle now, Beve into the bread basket. Palavi. Yeah. Palavi had set that one up from last week, and Emma Mulovu didn't move around. She was sitting behind all the time, and that was a really quite um, easy access ball for her. Doesn't stop Luan Akafalau from giving her a hard paced ball, though. And here comes Tonga again on a hell ball. What would you like to see from Moaluvu then? More footwork? Because she's hanging Absolutely. behind again now. She really needs to cut her strides down. Get off that body. Don't let Palavi find her, which, which she's doing. She's very much dictating that circle. It needs to shift. Emma Moaluvu needs to move really hard with her footwork. Make sure she's not square to ball, which she's getting caught for. But Palavi on a footwork call there from the shooter. Sees Fiji with the ball and goal defence from Fiji. Marangi did exactly the same thing. I think we all just need to take a little breath here. <laughs> Fiji throwing themselves at the ball. We write a big deep breath for both teams, I think, is needed. And that's what they're going to get here. Possession call, so Moaluvu doesn't have to stand out of play. Tonga, they're lifting. Great to see Marie Hansen, the goal attack from Tonga, injecting herself into the game. She's really not afraid to step up into that front space and be present to the feeders. Both shooters just running away at the wrong time, and so there was no one presenting for the pass. Here we go, Mafia. Mafia standing up in a big moment. Very reliable. Palavi takes it like a gift overhead. Stands up tall, delivers the shot. Tonga hit 44. Time called by the umpire with a change coming for Fiji. Wing attack. Rolumi is coming on at the wing attack position. Nonge, Anna Nonge, the wing attack from Fiji going to the bench. Let's see if this change is the injection Team Fiji needed. Royal Linney going long. It's open. Bouncing down. Vathia stands tall. Delivers. It's five in a row for Matilda Vathia from Team Fiji, the goal shooter. When you're in a position like this, Currently six goals down, Fiji Maji. You need a player like Fafia to stand up and really direct what's happening for Fiji so that they don't get caught up in that chaos. Absolutely. Hansen turning and shooting. 
There's that presence we were talking about before, just making sure that she's in front. She's not afraid to be there and be the first option as opposed to the second from Pallavi. Claire Longy coming out. Read that beautifully. What a moment. She's waiting her time to come out for a flyer. Can they convert Yomi's efforts? Oh, straight into the hands of Fiji, but a penalty will help out Tonga here. They maintain their possession. Oka full hour edge of the circle, finds Pallavi. A contest in the air. Both defenders out of play. You can see Hansen just setting herself up for the rebound if needed. And within the final minute, Tonga still in front, 46-38. And that's Pallavi's five in a row as well. She's only missed one in between, though, her sets, so she's been very consistent this game. A chance for Tonga to go back to back here. That was Fiji's centre they converted before, and Pallavi's just winning that contest between Mualuvu and Pallavi every day of the week. Yeah. She's got more movement happening. She's anticipating and directing what's happening in that circle. And Fiji just lacking a little bit of punch in their defence at the moment. The shooting ends. Still firing, though. Lathea steady for Fiji under the net. And our flying start from Veve. Puts a foot down. Called for a stepping by umpire Kate Wright. She did come in hot on that one. And that'll be all she wrote for the third quarter. Tonga leading Fiji 47 to 39 out by eight goals now. So that was a four goal win in that third quarter for Tonga. Eu faço a 
It's wooden, it's carved, it's absolutely stunning. It is beautiful. And either of these sides would love to be taking it home with them on the plane. Oh, fish are so lucky then, just holding on to possession as it's spun in her hands. If Fiji can score first in this quarter, it will be a big statement. Try and dictate some of the momentum back. Ayongi. Wants a piece of it, pulled up by the umpire, just a little bit too close. And so obstruction, we'll see her stand at the top of the circle. For Fia, a big moment for her. Fiji hit 40, they're behind by seven. And it's Tonga's turn with the ball. Palavi with front space, dictating where she wants it. Oh, firing it inside. Drained that one. She's got a hot hand. She's not afraid to use it. Nice little offload from Wilson we'll Wakula, the goal attack to Caitlin Fisher. Rolini, hard and direct with the feed. Oh, teasing us, the ball heads round the rim. Another goal for Fiji. The captain's back on court. Ningri. Back into that goal defensive position. She got a little bit of treatment before on the bed on her knee. We saw her leave the game earlier. She's certainly back out there now, which is good for Fiji. One here by Tonga. Oh. Give it straight to Fiji. There's a foot race for Thea. Does she win it? She keeps it in play, but gives it straight back to Tonga. And it's chaos personified. Oh, one here almost by Royal Linney. And it will be Tonga. Little Royal Linney came absolutely cracking back at that one as well. What a contesting for ball action we've just seen. Palavi doesn't want to waste a second. Tonga hit 50. Out by nine. That was almost hard luck then on Fiji. Just caught in space that Okafalau was trying to run into. Hanson finds Pal Palavi. Both She's missed the shot. Yes, she did. I was surprised with that one because both Fijian defenders were caught on the back foot and they had good access to ball. And getting that pass into Palavi was really quite nice. Mualuvu hasn't had much of... The luck run her way in this game. Can they convert this opportunity for her? They do. Garcia Vakula just holding on to it. That's going to be the difference. Those little efforts now that we're in that final quarter. Fiji need to step up, ensure that they're controlling the game. Treasuring the ball, and they haven't done so there. They've given it straight to Ayongi. If the ball's high in the air like that, she's going to have a crack at it. And now Palavi will finish her efforts. Great cut and drive off that centre pass for Hocker Falau to get the ball. Verve backs up, gives it to Palavi. Oh, oh she's, she's missed the missed shot. Her. Hansen keeps it inside, just round the back of the post. Palavi bouncing, pinpoint accuracy with that little pass. And Hansen. Can't convert either. Oh, yeah, she she did well to keep that in with Hanson. The backing up between these two shooters just shows the connection they have, doesn't it, Margie? Yeah, and while Palavi has missed the last few, it's been a bit inconsistent from her. I mean, she has shot 200-odd goals before she came to this game. <laughs> I'd be tired too. <laughs> 
Absolutely you would. Oh, Aomi had eyes for the ball, but it snuck past her into the hands of Luthia. Fiji needs some small wins here. In the transverse line, Caitlin Fisher tries to stick her arm out and grab it. Nice little fake there from Hanson. Coming through. Mualovu still trying everything she can. Here she goes. She's rewarded with the rebound. You've just got to keep trying as a defender. Seems to be taking a deep breath though, Emma Mualovu, the, goal the goalkeeper from Fiji. She limped to the top of the circle after that work effort. Fafia turning, twisting, trying to get rid of Iongi. Taka's really working hard around the top of that circle to try and distract the Tongan defenders and pull them wide. Vavia's shot's just not dropping. You see Avakula just putting her body on the line. You could see Violetti giving the Tongan defenders some instruction from the side of the court. And Rolini just pushed Veve in the back. The umpire saw it straight away. Oh, coming through the captain almost steals the ball back for Fiji. Here we go. Navui got her hands to that one, the wing defence for Fiji. Great elevation. We've lost count of the number of times that Fiji have deflected the ball or won it back and then given it straight back to Tonga, unfortunately. It's that hard work rate for the ball and then just once you've got it, it's that almost a quarter of a second pause to see where your dress is that you need to offload the pass to. And if you're unbalanced, it just puts so much more pressure, pressure on that ball release. Oh, here's turnover. Oh, what a contest for the ball. These players are fired up. Royal Linney's happy that it's gone her way. It's a possession call, so no one has to stand beside. Raluni worked really hard for that one. Very high for a wing attack to come down for that ball. Oh, just pulled in. We see of a cooler. Lucky she's limber and great in the air. <laughs> Still eight minutes, plenty of time for Fiji to come back. I mean, size-wise, Brit, she's the smallest shooter in, the, in that circle. Goal <laughs> defence for Fiji and Ngiri just out of play. Three oh. seconds ticking. Moravolu. A little deflection. Fiji transition she didn't. Oh, no. Address the line. The Tongan throw in. Supporters yes. are not happy with that. Rules are rules. Oh. Nangiri trying everything at that one to see if she could just take Hanson's eye off that shot. Well, Linny to Bothia, who's come way outside where she needs to be to help out. Just working on this right-hand side of the court. Young is involved. She's tapped the ball into Tonga's possession. Caitlin Fish has gone flying after colliding with Oka Falau. And called for the contact. Very physical out here. And that's fair in my eyes. You happy with that call? Well, Kaylin Fisher had eyes on ball and she was certainly going from ball. And I mean, we're sitting up here where we're looking at them coming at an eagle eye down, but didn't stop Hanson from having a go and turning that ball over then. Oh, Kalavi, very careful, tippy toeing the edge of the court. And this is a message for Fiji. You can't switch off. As soon as you've gone back ball or got a penalty, you can't think, oh, we're safe here. You have to keep working and stay alert. That's right. Oh, Hanson almost loses it herself. There. Oh, there we go. What's this call? Oh. Contact on the ball. Well, Ovi very unhappy with that call from the umpire. Hanson just giving her a tap on the back there. Oh. 
Tonga starting to push away with a comfortable lead. They're out by 10, 55 to 45. We've still got six minutes of play. Koltai Lepo did well to get a little touch on that ball, but she's quick to pick up a little um, scrap when it goes on the ground. Like, she's all over the top of that circle. It's incredible how quick the Tongan defenders have connected. That's right, with Ayongi not really playing a part in the start of this tournament, or much of this tournament. And transverse line, looking into the goal third, Tonga. Searching for the post. Hansen's bobbled it. Feet oh. in. Clearly their ball. More Lovu just asking the umpire to please set it up. Now there's a hard drive. Oh. We've got to go long. Oh. Back into Fiji's hands. Very lucky here. For Fia, a long way from post. Laura Linney finds Fisher up top. She's heading towards the circle. One, two, with Russell, Vakula. Nice. Really nice shuffle shot in there off a of Rolini feed. And it's the small wins that Fiji have to take here. There was a breaking then from Tonga that went unnoticed. Rolini, one, two, with Vafia. It's another caution for wing defence offside. We've seen a few of those during the tournament. The wing defenders being cautioned on the circle edge there. Two from two for Rosia Vapula. She's starting to get involved, starting to make sure that her presence is known. And that's her five on the run there in this quarter, the final quarter. And Veve almost loses the ball. Fisher really starting to work her out. But the ball still makes it to Pallavi, and she's not going to miss. Knocks it down, takes Tonga to 56, and injury time has been called. Rolini coming off the court, and we're going back to our starting wing attack. Narangi. Oh, no one get. Oh, Bebe just got that chase down on that ball again. Navoy just having an attempt to ball, but ends up on body on Hanson, gets called for a contact, the wing defence of Fiji. Stuck for a second phase. Palavi always, always presenting herself on the baseline. A little flick. Tonga can go back to back here. Here she is with front position. Palavi, oh my goodness, doesn't flinch. Out by 10 again, Tonga. Surely this lead will have them with their hands on the trophy. Fisher running back hard for Fiji. They lose it again, oh, Fiji. Oh, through the legs of Anna. No, she's not happy. Sorry, Rusi Vakula, she wouldn't be happy with that one. And as you mentioned, Totaya Lupu straight on the loose ball. And her effort, see Tonga score again, 59-48. Just a bump off between the captain, the Fiji, and goal defence and Hansen. Hansen allowed to roam with space. She misses the shot. Fiji and captain Ngiri is on the rebound, just settling herself here with the ball. Fiji working it up this inside channel for Thea. A lovely roll off the body to get round Diongi. And Rusia Vakula in front. Fiji still trying to come back. They're going to run out of time though. They're down by 10, 59 49. It's important to push hard until the final whistle. Here comes the Tongan crowd just singing home the team. This tournament has just been so important for all of the country. Absolutely. And it's been a wonderful show of Pacific Islander culture. We've 100% also had it has been. Singapore involved, but it 
for much of the Pacific countries participating, it's been lovely to see them mingle amongst each other and also celebrate their culture as much as possible this week. Correct. We've got the World Cup qualifiers um, in July being um, hosted in Fiji. Whilst Fiji aren't the winners today, this is certainly going to be an absolute excellent learning experience and an opportunity for them and Tonga and Samoa. Sophia pulling out all the tricks she's got right before the final <laughs> whistle. A bit of a Gretel Bowetta lay up there. Here she goes again mid-range. We know that Fiji... Oh, well, there misses that shot. Fiji, their strongest quarter is generally the last quarter, so I'm not surprised they're pushing to this final second. It's so done the on the clock. Final whistle. And, I mean, PNG will also be accompanying that World Cup qualifier as well. So they were here. They've also been able to learn incredibly a lot about their own team and the potential... So this tournament has been an absolute success. Samoa as well. Yes. 20 seconds is all that remain between Tonga's hands being on the Pacific Australia Sports Netball Trophy. Oh. They lead by nine. Fiji's going to take that back to eight. And Nongo just found us to recall a lovely under the, under, the, under the post there. A final set of pass for Fiji. What can Vithia do? She can't pull it in. Tonga goes wild. <laughs> they win the first inaugural Pacific Australia Sports Netball Series by eight goals, 60 to 57. They're taking that beautiful wooden trophy home. And look at what it means to them. Absolutely. So intense. It's amazing. I mean, the, the floor here, and it's concrete. It's shaking. <laughs> The crowd on their feet, proudly waving their flags, singing along. And you can see the players, some of them have got tears in their eyes. Fiji also a wonderful team at this tournament. Absolutely. Very excited to be hosting those Oceania World Cup qualifiers in July. Only a few months and they'll be back on court playing against these teams again. I'm just so excited that um, all of the countries have been able to get netball under their belt. They've been able to have their national team, join their dresses, play with pride, get that valued experience that they need to get themselves ready for the qualifying tournaments that are coming up. To see two Pacific Island teams compete like this and to see all of the countries being able to run through the tournament. through those first moments and passages of play when you come off. It does resonate differently as to how you feel the next time you step on court. So it's always that very exciting first moment. Um, you don't easily forget it for every athlete that's ever had a debut in any sport that they've competed in. I'm sure everyone will remember that first moment, those nerves and the thoughts running through. But I'm sure the athletes that have all made their first um, debut here have uh, certainly enjoyed their experience here. And just before we focus on the ceremony that's about to take place where we'll find out our MVP of this grand final. Just give me your lasting memory. I know you were keen to give it to me before. <laughs> Probably trying to talk over the crowd with all of the excitement, but um, I think it's been really quite, um, as a coach, being able to share in this actual tournament and to watch these extra athletes, the new ones that are coming on, and also the most um, exciting I think I saw was watching Kimberly Lim take her 95th 
test cap. Um, I think international, when, sorry, not test, but international cap, when you are able to do that at 28 years, I mean, she's, she's a baby. She's got plenty more years of netball in her, and I'm, I, hope, I hope that I am around to be able to see that 100th hundredth, hundredth match for her because that's so important to be able to see the athletes returning and competing and sharing their experience and still in the sport after so many games. We can see Hualita Vevi, the captain of Tonga, just branded in so much of the decorations around her neck. And the ceremony looks like it's very shortly about to start. You can see the tears flowing, how much it means to these players. It really is such a special opportunity. Definitely. The fact that they've been able to do this, and we've said it before, their family is here in the crowd. I think we don't lose that you're playing, in, you're playing in your country's dress, you're playing with pride, and you're doing it with your family on every single ball and pass. Sometimes it's not about that loss. It's about the celebration of the support, the sport and the support around you. All right, well, the ceremony is starting now, so we're going to head down to Sider Court and let Nikita Savula do all the talking. We're just about ready. All the traditions happening, it's great to see. Good afternoon and welcome to the presentations for the inaugural Pacific Gold Sports Netball Series. Firstly, we would like to acknowledge that we stand on the traditional land of the Dharawal people. We pay our respect to elders past and present and emerging and to their culture and continue to work towards reconciliation and justice. What an exciting week of netball it has been here at Netball Central. I've obviously been here for every game. I hope you guys have managed to get along because we've had six days five teams, 60 athletes, and 11 games of netball this week. So let's give a round of applause for the Pacific Gold Sports Netball Series. We've witnessed passion, courage, professionalism. Just remember these girls aren't even professional athletes. We've had great success through many talented athletes, coaches, umpires, and officials. Such great competitions like these aren't possible without a huge input from our workforce and officials. So can everyone please give us a round of applause for the coaches, team managers, event organisers, our umpiring team, our bench officials as well. Thank you everyone for your efforts and time this week. We are really appreciative. And also, I've loved it throughout the week. A big massive thank you to you, the crowd, for coming along and supporting your teams. If you haven't managed to get here or you've been watching on the live stream, I'll just give you a quick rundown. Pacific Gold Sports Netball Series has four teams, Tonga, Fiji, Samoa, Papua New Guinea, and we've been so lucky to have our sisters from Singapore as invitees as well. So we've got, Tonga, uh, we've got Samoan representatives, we've got Team Singapore, and we've got Papua New Guinea here as well. They've all played fantastic this week, and thank you for joining us. We've seen so much talent on and off the court and we just wish all of our teams and their athletes all the best in the future endeavours. It's a big year for netball for these teams uh, and we look forward to seeing what you can produce further on the court. Presenting the medals to our teams today will be the CEO of Netball Australia, Kelly Ryan, and the Executive General Manager of Strategic Projects, Government and Community, Glenn Turner. We'll start off with the tournament's most valuable player presentation. The most val valuable player award recognises a player from the tournament displaying exceptional talent throughout the series. Actually, there's actually two for this series, as they couldn't be separated. If you've been watching 
it might come as no surprise, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome the dual MVPs of the series from the winning team Tonga, Captain Halita Veve and... And I said there was two. The second most valuable player, they're equal, we couldn't split them, is goal shooter, Unique Pallavi! All right, Halita and Unique, can we just grab you in front of the banners and we'll grab a photo. Unique, don't run away. Keep those moves happening. Up to the banners, we'll get a photo. They've been absolute superstars in what is a very, very strong Tongan team. All right, as we finish up those photos, we will move into the runners-up medals. Thank you, ladies. That's our tournament MVPs, Halita Bebe and Unique Pallavi. As I said, we'll move into the runner-up presentation. Please welcome the Fiji Pearls, led by their captain, Alissi Nangiri. This wasn't part of the script, but let me just quickly read out their names. We've had Captain Alyssi Nangiri, Matilla Vothea, Meliana Rusivakula, Anna Nayunge, Caitlin Fisher, Atetha Kasanivalu, Emma Mualuvu, Unaisi Raluni, Jemima Vakathengu, Avelina Navue, Seriana Marangi, and a shout out, she's on one leg, Vaiti Wangatambu. Coached by Una Rakora, manager Lucy Rakora, physiotherapist Lisa Pryor, and team official Dana Wiedenhofer. That is our runners up for the series, the Fiji Pearls. They went down, I think it was 12 goals in the round match to Tonga, so they, it was a big improvement. Only down by eight goals in that grand final. Carrying a few injuries and things is always tricky. But no doubt we'll see the might of Fiji back at the World Cup qualifiers in Fiji, or the Oceania qualifiers for the World Cup in Fiji in July. Next. Yeah, let's hear it one last time for Fiji! Vanakavaka Levu, ladies. We move into the grand final MVP. The Most Valuable Player Award recognises the one player from that 60 minutes displaying exceptional talent. The Pacific Gold Sports Netball Series grand final Most Valuable Player. She's a superstar. We're going to just be so lucky to watch her over the next 10 or 15 years. It is goal shooter Unique Pallavi. She's so awesome to watch in that goal circle. What a tournament she's had. So she's taken home the win with Team Tonga. She's taken home a tournament most valuable player and also the grand final most valuable player. What a tournament. Next time she heads back to Tonga, it's gonna go a bit nuts. All right, we move into the winning team presentations. Finally, I would like to welcome the Pacific Gold Sports Netball Series champions to come forward to collect their medals. It is Team Tonga. They have been superbly led by their captain and centre, Halita Veve. Next up, Petty Telenoa, Lucia Faonuku, Luana Akafalau, 
Ana Kailahi. Grace Farrelly. Valu Totai Aleppo. Renee Violetti. Unique Pallavi. Beyonce Pallavi. It was amazing to see two sisters on the court earlier in the tournament. Goal attack, Marie Hansen. And she made it on the court this afternoon, Claire Iongi. Led by coach Jacqua Pori Makia Simpson, assistant coach Joanne Morgan, manager Kerry Ann Farrelly, primary care Tiana Mosca, and physiotherapist Van Nguyen. Totally straight from the script there, going through the team list, but I think it's really important that we honour everyone in the team. I'd like to invite the captain, Halida Veve, to come forward to say a few words. On behalf of the girls in Team Tonga, we want to thank first and foremost our Heavenly Father for allowing us to be here together to showcase our talent um, and to be surrounded with love and support from our people. We'd like to thank Nepal Australia for giving us the opportunity to actually be here, for us to be able to play in front of our families and our friends, and for us to be able to be home. Um, we are truly grateful and beyond blessed to be able to be given this opportunity, and we love you all so much. Um, Ofatu, and I hope you all get home safe. Yeah, just a huge thank you, shout out to Fiji for an awesome game. It wasn't easy. A massive shout out to Tonga Netball Association. It's a lot there behind the scenes. Did so much for us to get here, to be here. Messaged us every day. So a huge shout out to Salote. Um, yeah, huge shout out to our family. Couldn't have done it without you guys. And to the girls, what a team, man. We only met a few days ago, but here we are with our gold medal. So a huge thank you. Couldn't have done it without you girls. So yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you, Nipple Australia, all our sponsors. Thank you. Thank you, Petty and Halita. I'd now like to welcome the CEO of Nipple Australia, Kelly Ryan, to say a few words. Thank you, everybody. Wow, that was amazing. What a phenomenal game to end what has been an incredible week and a phenomenal series. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Fiji. I have no doubt you've done your country incredibly proud this week and this game in particular. So well done. And a very big congratulations to Tonga. Again, you will have done your homeland incredibly proud. All the troubles that they've been through in the last few months, uh, and this hopefully provides a bit of light for everybody back home. I'd like to thank you and congratulate all the teams that participated over the last week. There's been some exceptional plays, tight games and incredible camaraderie on the court. This has exemplified our theme for the week, which has been one court, one family. And I know that we've had people all over the world tuning into these games, which speaks volumes for how connected we all are. Of course, this series, the Pacific Oz Sports Netball Series, couldn't have been possible without the support of the Australian Government through the Pacific Oz Sports Program. I want to thank the umpires, the match officials and everyone behind the scenes from Netball Australia for your tireless effort to pull this event together as well. So thank you. <laughs> Lastly, but not least, I want to thank the crowd. You guys are amazing. And we are already planning for the next event and I cannot wait to see you all when we plan that one. So thank you and enjoy your time. Bye. All right, we're nearly finished, but there's a beautiful Pacifica Netball Woman trophy waiting to be collected. So I now invite team captain Halita Veve to come forward and accept the Pacific Golf Sports Netball Series Champions Trophy from Kelly on behalf of the team. All right, let's hear it one last time for Tonga!
as I said earlier, it is going to be a big year in July. The four Pacific Gold Sports Netball Series teams from the Pacific Islands will head to Fiji in July for the Oceania Netball World Cup qualifiers. The top two teams from that series will compete at the Netball World Cup in 2023 in South Africa. So it's a big year. All these four teams want to qualify. And also Singapore will be qualifying through the Asian region. So it's a huge year for netball. Uh, before we head off, I would again like to commend all those involved in the operations of this tournament. And also congratulate all the athletes and team members involved in making this week so successful both here in Australia and over in the islands. Before we go, please just be mindful that there are other sports on other courts. Please don't exit through entry, uh, exit doors that aren't marked. Well, what a wonderful end to what has been an amazing week. Margie Parr, thank you for joining us in expert commentary every day this week, showing up no matter how many training sessions you had with your own team <laughs> each night uh, and just being a part of this because your analysis of the game is is really uh, appreciated and uh, just your knowledge of the, the Pacific Island regions as well is, is really appreciated as well. So thank you. Thank you, Britt. It's been an absolute um, pleasure and it's been my honour actually to be able to call some of these games. It's been a fantastic experience. I'm just as a um, South Pacific and myself, it's really important to be able to put back and to do these kind of things. And I've just thoroughly, um, absolutely relished the opportunity to be a part of this tournament. So, yeah, it's been great. Thank you. Well, that is all from us today. A huge thank you to everyone that helped put on this wonderful series. Thank you to the Pacific Australia Sports Program, to the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade for funding it and to Netball Australia for all their hard work planning and organising the event. A thank you must go to everyone tuning in to the Netball Australia TV for this series from home. Your support hasn't gone unnoticed and we've known that this stream has been viewed from countries all over the world. So we're very excited that we've been able to bring such wonderful action to you. We do want to say a massive thank you, of course, to the people working hard behind the scenes at Clutch TV who have put so much hard work into ensuring you can watch along this series and their efforts, of course, mean that you can see what's happening on screen now. Some beautiful moments in netball and just some beautiful cultural moments as well. So thank you to Clutch TV for all your hard work. The very first champions of this wonderful tournament, of course, Tonga, undefeated, five straight wins and looking every bit like a team that could potentially make it to the Nepa World Cup next year in Cape Town. They are currently without an official world ranking and they have just won this series, beating four other teams. So good on them. We hope to see you in Cape Town in 2023 and we'll keep a close eye on the Oceana qualifiers in Fiji in July to see whether you get there. Congratulations, of course, to Unique Palavi and Hualata Vevi on their, vo their Most Valuable Player Awards. And also, we want to say well done to Fiji for putting up such a great fight in the grand final today. Brittany Carter and Margie Parr signing off one last time from the Pacific Australia Sports Netball Series. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you another time.
kuna lahi he forgot ua ko koe ni pe boi Digicel International. Ave ai topa panga e wanoa, prepaid bundle pe boi talafiselini ki ho family pe a e huho hi ngoa ki lulu ki kuna ai Samsung Galaxy Flip Z pe S21 pe koe pade pa anga e wa ngiao he wika kotoa pe. Ki hao fanga maari ke ikuna pe ke ngawe aki e Digicel International app pe koe digicelinternational.com pe ahi ai fale koloa. Fitu taki maupem ho kainga aki ho ave ai topa prepaid bundle pe talafiselini e ahoni.